Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Slay the Princess. Previously, we slayed the princess on the nightmare route, but she didn't die, so now we need to go and slay her again. Alright, so we're at the start of the game. If you don't remember, we did basically most of the options in the nightmare route, now we're on a new loop. And I'm gonna go down the route that I was the most interested in back when I played the demo. Turn around and leave. Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? Yep. Okay, fine, you're persistent. I'll go to the cabin. Lie, yes, I definitely know where I'm going. Somehow I doubt that, but fine. I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Good. What we're being asked to do here is wrong. Better to wash our hands of this whole situation than to take part in it. Ignore that annoying little voice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But he's the hero. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. You can't do that. Turn around again and leave again. You're really keen on wasting everyone's time, aren't you? It's remarkably selfish, if you ask me. I've already outlined the stakes of the situation. If you don't do your job, everyone dies. Like, dies, dies. Forever. I don't care, I'm not killing a princess. Good, maybe everyone should die. It's what they get for dumbing me in the woods and asking me to kill someone for them. When I said everyone, I meant everyone. That's a pretty large group to just condemn to death over a single princess. Eh, it's fine, I'll make another one. And, last I checked, you're part of everyone too, so if you think about it, walking up to that cabin and slaying her is really in your best interests as well. I wouldn't die even if you killed me. But fine, you turn around and trek back down the path you came. Oh, would you look at that, you're at the cabin again. Now, I'm not normally one for superstition or astrology, but I have to say, it seems like the universe itself is doing its best to bring you to your fated confrontation with the princess. Oh yeah? Well, I guess I start walking in a different direction. Again. In fact, I'm going to just keep trekking through the wilderness until I find a way out of this place. There's always a choice. Let me tell you right now that you're making the wrong one for pretty much everyone who has ever lived, as well as for everyone who ever will. Tough luck. And here we go. As you trudge into the woods, something strange starts to happen. God, it's like the house is like chasing me. At first, it's little flickers out of the corner of your eyes. Glimpses of familiar wooden structures through the leaves. But as you focus on your surroundings, you start to realize that those flickers weren't just a trick of light. In every direction, there is a path and a cabin. And not just a cabin, the cabin an infinite fractal of paths and cabins desperately trying to draw you back to where you need to be. With the ever context of the ever endings we got, uh, I'm actually kind of looking at this cutscene a little differently now. Wait, what's going on? But you're too stubborn for that, aren't you? It doesn't matter how many paths or cabins appear around you, you're just going to do whatever you can to shirk your responsibility because you care more about irritating me than you do about the fate of the world. Yes. You've doomed us all. You know that, right? But of course you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't just wander off into the forest in search of certain death. I always call this the manly route. <laughs> I don't like taking orders. You lose track of just how long you spend aimlessly tromping through the wilderness. But it's not like any of that time spent lost in the woods really matters, because it isn't long before the world ends and everyone dies. Sweet. Chapter Double. The Stranger. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. And past that princess is the wall holding back the titans. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Wait, has this happened already? I think some of these are the same dialogue. Those walls weren't here last time. You can't just force me to go to the cabin. What are you talking about? I'm sure those walls have always been there. 
it makes sense if you think about it. If there weren't any walls in the woods, someone might have gotten lost. Or, heaven forbid, someone other than you might have stumbled onto the princess. What if the narrator is, I mean, because he has the same voice, I'm not sure if it has a tenant or not, like, thematically. Um, my theory now is the narrator is just another aspect of ourselves, just like the opportunist. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. So it'd be like the voice of the narrator. Like, his job is always just to narrate, like, that's what he does. I don't know. I think it's more fun if he knows what we're thinking. He's like a captive audience. He might have walled off everything but the path to the cabin, but I'm sure there's plenty of other ways we can ruin his day. If by ruining my day, you mean ruining everyone's day forever, then yes, I suppose there are plenty of ways you could pull that off. Here's the other thing. The reason he can control us is because he's us. The world really did end last time, didn't it? We should be careful. For all we know, we just got lucky. The world hasn't ended yet. And you are never going to slay her with that attitude. Stuff those pathetic little voices to the back of your mind and stay focused on the task ahead. Wait, has an app already? Yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm going to the cabin. If I can't run away from the cabin, then I'm just staying in the woods forever. Stay in the woods forever. I'm gonna save on that one. Oh, that's clever! A little boring, though. It's extremely boring. Can we really do that? Can we really just do nothing? No, you can't just do nothing. You have to do something. I'm just gonna get my Game Boy out and go get that Mew under the truck. <laughs> All right, so it's decided. Even if it's boring, we're going to do nothing forever. Sweet. Congratulations, you continue to waste everyone's time and do nothing. Wait, can you still hear me? Who's getting... It's the hands. What they intersect. Weird feeling. It's like I'm barely even here anymore. It's when we go too far off script. Well, it's not nothing, that's for sure. Does that mean we messed up? Will the wrong news unwound. It's physical matter replaced by a textured nothing. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Memory returns. And there's the skip feature. So at some point, it's not going to be right away. I'm going to come back. Once I kind of cleared up the majority of the routes. And I'm going to load a save. That's just going to skip through and just try to get all these in succession. And seeing if there's like a weird ending or something by only doing the hands. Like not grabbing any vessels. You want to know what dwells in the empty spaces? That looks a little bit different. Confusion, why are you here? I'm unfinished. Resistance, fingers drag claws across the glass surface of your soul. Frustration, this vessel is full of you. It is useless to us if it doesn't bring more gifts. Force pushing against your will. No, you cannot go back, not there. Regret, this world has broken beyond repair and must weave something new. A wagging finger. There's only so much thread in this place. Do not waste it. I'm my only salvation. Only so much thread. Ah. Oh, we blowed. You're on a path. But yeah, that's why I highly suspect there could be a never ending. Just based on just grabbing the hands. So I'm gonna try to avoid the hand cutscenes right now then. I mean, that, that one was unintentional. I might get him by accident. Suddenly proceed. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm going to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. If we're stuck going in there, maybe we should believe her. Maybe she isn't a liar. Yeah. Ignore him. He's just being difficult for the sake of it. Let's keep an open mind. Proceeding to the cabin. The cabin interior is wrong. A confusing patchwork of many cabin interiors, all projected across what's almost the same space. But it's all shifted. An inch here, a foot there, such that the seams are never quite visible enough for the place to make any sense. This is different than the demo. The only furniture of note is a plain table, its legs all the wrong lengths, its material devoid of feature. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. If he wants us to take it, maybe we should just leave it to collect dust. Or better yet, 
grab it and throw it out the window. What good is a knife against a world-ending monstrosity anyway? No, we're taking the knife. Have you seen this place? We have literally no idea what to expect and no idea what we're dealing with. I think that's the first time I've heard the hero actually say like, yeah, just take that damn knife. I've already told you what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a princess. How many times do I have to explain this incredibly simple and straightforward premise? You can't just say that. But when everything here is so wrong. Maybe the ending of the game is literally just gonna be this is just like a, a roleplay session. <laughs> Listen to me. My job is to describe facts as facts and to guide you through your job, which is to slay the princess and through that action save the entire world. And if you're going to slay her, you cannot let fear creep into your heart. You cannot lose yourself before you even get to her. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you've piqued my interest. What's going to happen if we lose ourselves? Nothing, because you're going to pull yourself together. Joke's on you. Just ignore the stressful geometry and stay calm. How? Even if we closed our eyes, you're constantly describing it to us. I'm not going to stop doing my job. So you're just going to have to get better at yours. And quickly, if you don't mind. Yes, take a deep breath. I'm all for getting under his skin, but we'll miss out on loads of fun if we shrivel up into a ball and go insane the first time we see something weird. What you're seeing here is obviously real. Just accept it and go with the flow. It really isn't hard. Okay. Okay, I'm fine. You sure? Are you, are you, are you, are you okay? You, you are, are you sure you are okay? Good. Now, whenever you're ready, we're all waiting for you to complete a very important task. Which is leave. Explore. You didn't see one of the mirror on the wall. Explore approach the mirror. Explore take the blade. Hmm. We should look at ourselves. Wouldn't that be fun? You won't be looking at yourself because there isn't a mirror. There's the table, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. Perhaps the narrator doesn't want- oh god, that's weird. Doesn't want to acknowledge the mirror. Because it, it will be acknowledging ourselves. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. You insisting it isn't there just makes me want to look at it even more. Why would you lie about that? What's the point? I also want to look at myself. I want to see how handsome I am. We shouldn't waste time preening. If he is lying about the mirror, it might be important. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would it even do? So we're all in agreement then. We're looking. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wet the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago, and now it's gone. You know that taking the mirror away from us isn't going to change things, right? We'll find it again, and then we'll see whatever it is that you don't want us to see. So let's load back. Now we're just going to approach the mirror straight on. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. What are you talking about? This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward Same. and rub your hand, but there, and now it's gone. You know that taking the mirror away from us isn't going to change things, right? We'll find yep. it again, and then we'll see whatever it is that you don't want us to see. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Okay, fine, you took the knife. But you really shouldn't hold it like that. Then how are we supposed to hold it? Oh, ho, ho. the other way, thumb at the bottom. It'll look much cooler and more serious if we hold it with our thumb at the bottom. It really doesn't matter how you hold the blade, as long as you have it. Just make a choice. Hold the blade the other way. You switch your grip on the blade. Congratulations. Yes! Isn't this so much better? <sighs> okay, fine. You're right. This does look a lot better. It really doesn't matter. Just get on with it and deal with the princess already. Explore. Throw the blade out the window. <laughs> yes! Do it! Seriously. Ugh, I need a weapon break both sides. the blade at the window, glass showering the cabin as your weapon flies out into the night. I suppose you'll just have to deal with the princess without it. We'll be fine. Don't worry about it. What's the worst that could happen? The world ends. Oh well. 
If the princess wasn't going to do it, the heat death of the universe was going to come for it eventually. I'm not so sure. This place is already messing with my head. What's done is done. Good luck, hero. Enter the basement. The door to the basement Boy. creaks open, revealing a web of branching staircases all built from unidentifiable materials. Nothing here seems to belong, and the closer you examine your surroundings, the more confused you get, your head throbbing with the effort of making sense of this place. None of the stairs even seem to go anywhere, let alone down. The air here has a sickening, almost sludge-like miasma to it, the kind of indiscernible quality that comes from the blending together of every scent there is at once. An odour that is simultaneously everything and yet the sum of it all coalescing into a thick, nauseating nothing. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. You know, you like to say that one. Her voice, a disquieting collage of tone and personality, drags up the stairs. Hello? Hi. What are you doing here? Are you here to kill? No. No. No, thank you. Oh, don't be such a baby. I don't want to do this. Let's just turn around and leave. This feels wrong. This feels like a trap. Like whatever we do, we're gonna die. We don't even have a weapon. But we already tried turning around and leaving, didn't we? And he threw up a wall. No way to go but forward. And whatever choice we make, whatever she is, we know one thing for sure. And what's that? That the fate of the world hinges on your success? No, that you're annoying. There'll still be plenty of ways to ruin his day. <laughs> Is it the contrary? We 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 got some we got some vibes going, you know what I mean? Like we got our secret handshake. Uh take the harsh stairs to the left. You step to the left. The path is cruel against your feet, the impact of each step sending pulsing vibrations up your legs until there's nothing left in them to feel. That's not my legs. The air around you grows cold the further you progress. At first a barely noticeable drop, quickly evolving into a numbing cold. Your toes feel like blocks of ice, your breaths puff out in clouds of condensed vapour. You shudder against it as you continue down the stairway, losing yourself in the bone-deep chill. Are you trying to mess me up? You slowly lose sense of yourself the further you go. Time disappears, and you can feel yourself begin to untether. Physical sensations dull and then vanish, until the only things experienced are the endless repeating patterns and emotions of the journey, a continuous march forward to a destination long forgotten. I have gone back to the concept art. In early sketches. Consumption and betrayal. Skepticism and blind devotion. Rivalry and submission. Terror and longing. Pain and unfamiliarity. And at the heart of it all, an emotion that can only be described as... Are you just going to stand there? What? All the routes. What? What the hell was that? What happened to us? I feel so strange. Like I'm fundamentally different, but also still the same person I was at the top of the stairs. A stranger route's so different now. Oh well, that was a trip, but now it's over. Time to get back to our old devilish ways. The princess, eyes bright but otherwise shrouded in darkness, watches you impatiently from the other side of the basement. Don't forget why you're here. And uh, why are we here again? In case you weren't listening, I'm afraid I lost myself on the way down. You're here to- he's just being an ass, we remember. Though I'm still not sure if we should trust you. Let's talk to her for a bit, try and get our bearings. She seems... normal. No. Let's see, you're apparently afraid the rule I was sent here to slay you. Getting down here is weird, like I was pulled apart and pulled back together again. How do you know what happened to me? What, like you need me to hold your hand and tell you everything's okay? You're not really cut out for this, are you? Why are you even here? Damn, the stranger route became like the put me down route. We're oh god. We're stuck down here forever, aren't we? There's no way out, and barely a way in. As the princess speaks again, it's almost as if she fractures. And where there was once just one of her, there is now another. We can do that? I don't like this. It's those cabins all over again. Can, can we put her back? Again? Have you been here before? 
Should we tell him? Nah, let him stew. <laughs> right, I'm telling him. Yeah, we've been here before, but we never went to the cabin. We just turned around and left until... Until? It's hard to describe. Until the only thing we could see was the same cabin going on forever. And then you told us that the world ended and we died. And then we woke up, and I'm pretty sure you're familiar with all the rest of it. It seems to me like you saw something you weren't supposed to have seen. If only you'd listened to whatever words of wisdom you were given in that other reality. But what's done is done, isn't it? Whatever you saw last time, unsee it. Whatever thoughts weaseled their way into your head, unthink them. If it's not already too late. You have a job to do here, and you need to do it now. Ooh, new plan. Let's see if we can make even more of her. Contrarian. There's more of you now. And what's that supposed to mean? Are you trying to get under my skin? I don't feel like I've gotten any bigger. There must Whoa. be something wrong with you. I'm the same as I was a moment ago. She fractures again. I don't like where this is going. Neither do I. Which is why you need to slay her now before things get more complicated than they already are. How would we even do that? Where would we start? We could always start by retrieving the blade. The one he made us throw out the window. I wasn't the one who threw it. Oh, come on, you told us to. Don't try to pass the blame now that it's come back to bite us. Yeah, it was you who threw it out, not that manly guy. Well, if I'd known we'd be dealing with this, maybe I wouldn't have been so hasty with my suggestions. I don't think we're going to be able to put her back. Kind of hurts to think about it, doesn't it? It's like everything we say just multiplies her. It certainly looks that way, so please, for the love of everything, stop asking her questions and stop stalling. You're obviously just making things worse. What's your name? Leave her in the base? Wait. There's like more than one option in this one. You can address me as your royal highness or her majesty. Any honorific should do, really. Princess. It doesn't matter. I've been down here for so long. What's the point of a name if there's no one around to use it? She's just like us, for real. None of them have names. How astute. I told you she was untrustworthy. I know you've locked up down here for a reason. Do you know why you're down here? Maybe it's because I'm dangerous. But you know, right? You have to know. You're the only other person I've ever seen, or at least the only one I can remember. Don't give me false hope. Please just end this already. One way or another, just do it. Whoa. Don't be coy. We both know why I'm locked away here. I'm a monster, and the second I get out of this place, I'm going to end the entire world. Okay, this was fun for a bit, but we can't even really interact with her, can we? What's the point of asking questions if... All we're going to get is a million answers. Can't even follow what's going on anymore. I can. There's two princesses on the roof, that's a good thing. We need to get out of here. This whole place is making me itch. If I let you out of here, what are you gonna do? I don't think what I'd do really matters, does it? Oh. I just want to live my life. I'm a prisoner here, and whether or not you shoved me down here, you're practically my captor at this point. Anything I'd say is tainted by that. Besides, you already know what I'm going to do. If you want to put an end to me, then put an end to me. Not a single real answer. At least aside from this blood and destruction, it's infuriating, isn't it? Whose buttons are there for us to press? Whose skin is there for us to get under? Not exactly how I put it, but I don't disagree. There must be something we can do. Asking questions just seems to make things worse. This is reaching its breaking point. If you don't act now, there will be nothing in here but her. Take a deep breath and focus up. You can do this. No, I can't. But how do we decide what to do? Can there even be a right choice when all of them are so different? Stop overthinking it. Your drifting thoughts have clearly been part of the reason this situation has gotten out of hand. If you're trying to do the right thing, there's only ever been the one option, and that option is slaying her. Just, just do something. Do anything. Do all of it, if that's what you want. This place is hell, and it's only getting worse. Quite contrarian. I got this. I don't got this. I'm getting you out of here. I'm gonna try and free her. I don't know what you are, but I can't trust you. I can't trust anything here. Leave her in the basement. Regretfully, think about what time you throw the blade out the window. Wait, that's not right. Go on. 
You take a step what? forward. Your foot lands, but it lands different. You experience a firm footfall, a gentle tread, a confident stride. You can feel yourself rupture. The room spins, your perception multiplying in a sickening kaleidoscope as your very self is pulled in incomprehensibly many directions. You find the blade suddenly in your hands. All at once you use it to strike at her bindings as you remain upstairs and slay her and leave her to languish alone. Is this what the end of the world looks like? What an unbearable mess. But this... We can't... Do you not have anything witty to say? I could use a good bit of wit right now. Um... I'm still okay with this. No, I don't, because this isn't fun. How are we supposed to have fun if everything is happening at the same time? It's the same as nothing happening, and nothing is excruciating. That's big words coming from a contrarian. Luckily for all of us, nothing and everything doesn't go on forever. The world and the princess collapse in on themselves before it all... Falls apart? I think he's gone. We were never going to salvage this, were we? What happened to us? What are we? There are, there are parts, parts of us that are dead, dead and, and the others, and the others they, just don't don't fit. they just don't fit. We, we can, can feel, feel them moving around, around in spaces, spaces they, don't they don't belong. belong. It's, it's all, all so, so uncomfortable. uncomfortable. So this route... I'm not even sure if the original sprites are used. I mean, we'll see. Did you do this? Did, Did we, we do this? this? Can, can, can you pull, can us, you back pull us back apart? Can you fix us? Can you fix us? Uh, maybe that knife? We should help her. I think we did this. How surprisingly sincere. I didn't actually think our actions had consequences. It's a little late for regret, isn't it? Please, please, please. please. It's gonna be okay. I'll do my best. I don't think you're supposed to be fixed. No. You just destroyed everything. I'm not gonna fix you. It's gonna be okay. The hands! They grabbed it right away! You'll never know if she hears your reply. She's gone. Memory returns. The illusion of choice. She's got cheating. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that. Let's see if the other options do something else. You straight ahead, I'm not going to fix you. Yeah, it's the illusion of choice. Huh. Is. What happened to the previous stranger route? Do I have to grab the knife to trigger, or is that just gone, period? Actually, no. You know, it's not the knife, because the knife respawns, right? Probably wouldn't make much of a thing. Maybe it's the staircases? Soft stairs. You step to the right. The path feels soft and reassuring against your feet. The stairs almost seem to cradle you as you make your way down, like they're guiding your heels from one step directly to the next. You barely have to extend any effort to descend, the stairway doing most of the work for you. You don't feel like there's any concern that you might slip or tumble or lose your way. But the further you go, the deeper you sink in. First, I it's knew like this a lovely plush carpet, your toes digging down and barely hitting any resistance at all. But soon enough, you're fighting just to keep your knees from sinking out of sight. You know, as soon as I woke up this morning, that the narrator's gonna sit me down the damn pillow stairs. The softness threatens to swallow you whole, to wrest control of your body and surround you in a false ethereal bliss, pretending to save you from the cruelties of choice and consequence. It's slow going, but you manage to fight against the overwhelming urge to fall back into comfort and nothingness, the very struggle to continue forward consuming your every thought. You slowly lose sense of yourself the further you go. Time disappears, and you can feel yourself begin to untether. Physical sensations dull and then vanish, until the only things experienced are the endless repeating patterns and emotions of the journey, a continuous march forward to a destination long forgotten. Consumption and betrayal, skepticism and blind devotion, rivalry and submission, terror and longing, pain and unfamiliarity. And at the heart of it all, an emotion that can only be described as... I mean, Are I can you skip okay? It. Huh? What? 
What the hell was that? What happened to us? I feel so strange. I mean, it seems the like same. I'm Let's skip fundamentally... it. Does it all just lead to this? The illusion of choice. Yeah, it ended up the same way. I mean, we'll try the middle route, but it might just be the same outcome. Take the center staircase. You step onto the center staircase. Paths wind out around you in all directions, each step branching into its own staircases, which branch into their own staircases, and so on. You aren't quite sure if yours is taking you up or down, but at the very least, it's taking you somewhere. You concentrate on where you are, careful not to stray onto any of the many splitting branches that tempt you on all sides. You wouldn't want to have to backtrack to yours once you'd made a decision that took you someplace else. Oh my god, that one branch. Yes, free slushies. And so you take one careful, focused step after another. One foot down, another foot down, another after that. You lose yourself in following the correct pattern, in following what looks to be the true path, the one that cuts straight down, or up, or maybe sideways. But no matter the direction it goes, it certainly is the most true path. You know that much. I think. I, you slowly unless the knife really changed something, because this is go. we're back on the same route again. The stranger route got completely changed for the third time in a row. It's just slightly different. She's got, and there's that. Okay. Of course you're scared this is the end for you, but it's not the end for me. What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. He's just messing with us. Right? Approach the mirror. You approach the mirror. The illusion of choice. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward, they're gone once again. The mirror always makes him believe. But you didn't see what's in it. Wait, what's wrong with me? You've grown. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Proceed to the cabin. You're at the cabin. Approach her. Flickering lights and empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. Are you the same being as you were before? How much have you changed? Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern. But every vessel gives fresh perspectives, and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. What does it feel like to change like this? Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together, and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions, conflicts in my nature. And there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. This is the only path forward. When this is all done, do you know what you want to do? With every gift you bring me, I excavate the alleys of what I am meant to be. And every exploration yields new and complicated truths. What I will be is different than what I am. What I am is different from what I was. I cannot tell you what desires I will hold when I have changed. But in this moment, all I want is to know myself and to know you. You know this is the end of this. Once you're finished, I'm going to kill you, right? There is still much to be seen. Neither of us know the depths of our being. Perhaps at the end of this, I will be the one to kill you. Or perhaps we will leave this place together, and find new horizons to discover. Well, there's your endings. When I go back, a sort of invisible wall closes around me. Why can't I not do the same things I've done before? Those paths lead to worlds you've already seen, and to perspectives I have already made my own. They are useless to us now. Inaccessible. The only paths of value are those that are yet untread. 
You have been kinder to me than anyone else I've met. Thank you. Why wouldn't I be kind to you? You are the only thing I know that isn't me. What do you want me to bring you next time? Gifts aren't what someone tells you to bring them. Do not worry. There are no wrong answers. And every perspective illuminates my shadows and shares new secrets. Do you have any thoughts on this vessel? These ones are a contradiction. A winding kaleidoscope of paths and walls. They are stretched into a shape not unlike me, but it is a shape they cannot hold. There might be a determinational factor based on what vessels you bring her for the ending. They will make for a rich and vibrant heart. Do not mourn them, for they will finally get to know themselves. So you don't have any preferences on how you like to change or grow? My preference is for you to show me what you would like me to see. I cannot know the ways I wish to grow, for I have yet to feel them. It is you who guides me down the thin trail of perspective and memory. I don't want to hurt you, but the more times I go back, the worse I fear things will be. The vessels are a weave of emotion at odds with themselves, but they are only perspectives. They are not me. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. The land knife is now you. I would be alone and without sensation. I could not feel the joy of having you by my side, for I would not know your absence. How many more wrestles do I need to bring you? If I am to be an ocean, you have given me enough to build a pond. My waters are shallow and murky, and I yearn for more perspective. I wouldn't be surprised if it's all like five of them. Because I think there's about... If I had to do my math in my head... Every second form, chapter two form, probably can be grabbable. And then... You have multiple chapter three forms, so... It's gonna be like 15 of them? At least 15. At least 15 of them. Up to 20. The task of finding my vessels is your burden to carry. I'm only saying that because, like, we don't know how the routes... I think they're kind of, like, merging here and there and kind of overlapping a little. I'm ready to go back. I await your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. You must be like a From Software character. We will meet again. Ah! Everything goes dark and you die. I got the spiral vessel, bring the stranger to her. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. I think we're gonna go grab the uh, the damsel route after this, could be a little big change of pace. Okay, so we're gonna enter the basement without taking the blade. The door to the basement creaks open revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Sometimes when he breaks into that, he, 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 you know, he kind of like breaks into the air of voices. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Yes, it's me. Your knight in shining armor! It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Okay, it's not that great. I mean, I don't mean it's bad, but I just mean like... Hypnotizing, uh... Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Hi, just checking on you. I'm here to save you. I'm here to save you! How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in? Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs! I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. 
How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? With a knife. I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. Um... No. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end. See how it's titled? The end of the story. I'll see what I can do examine the chains. Hold on, let's talk a bit first. Okay... What's your name? Oh. She pauses, carefully formulating her words before she responds. You can address me as your royal highness. Or you can just call me princess if your royal highness is too formal. Is princess her name or her title? What if it's both? Could you imagine being named princess princess? Mario Mario? So is princess your name? Like I said, you can call me princess if you'd like. I'm sorry, I've been down here so long I guess I've just forgotten. I must have a name though. Everyone has a name. Okay, that's weird. She hadn't even thought to pick a name for herself. Hopefully you're starting to see that she can't be trusted. Go back upstairs, get the blade, and slay her before it's too late. I don't know anything about you, for all I know you're locked up down here for a reason. Of course I'm locked up down here for a reason. I don't actually know what that reason is, but you don't just stuff a princess in a basement and throw away the key without there being some sort of an explanation, right? You have all the explanation you need, and you should know better than to trust whatever she comes up with. So pretty much, if you haven't noticed, or if you didn't see the demos, Grabbing the knife is the biggest determinator at the start, aside from just not going to the cabin. Because it's, that's her complete personality, it's one of the two. She's either antagonistic, or she's... Save me, hero! If I'm the first person you've seen in a while, what have you been eating or drinking? I don't see what that has to do with anything. So once we've cleared these two out, aside from the triggers for the different endings, we'll have for the different chapters, you won't see too much more of chapter one in future episodes. This is the only time this is ever going to happen, but I agree with the princess. That's hardly relevant. Okay, but actually, what has she been eating? She has to eat, right? This is like one of those people like shutting down someone that's asking questions about a movie. If they actually jumped that high, they would have died. How come none of the characters have to go to the bathroom? I was sent here to slay you, you're apparently supposed to end the world. But I don't think... Oh, there's a bug. Hey developer, there's a bug! But I want to see you for myself, I'm not sure what to believe. But I don't actually think you're dangerous. Is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone, I, I like the world, I think. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here for so long. That's... How long has she been locked away? Did they tell you how I'm supposed to end the world? No. I was hoping you'd tell me. No, which is why I don't think you're actually dangerous. Sooner or later, you'll learn to trust me. Hopefully it won't be too late when you finally come around. Thank you for believing me. Now, can you help me get out of here? I still have a few more questions before we leave. There's going to be plenty of time to chat after I'm free, but okay. What do you want to know? The way she says that is kind of very sus. I can't believe they've been keeping you down here like this. I'm getting you out of here. Examine the chains. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No. You're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy. Far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Yeah, no, a narrator didn't talk about that one. Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. 
whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. If there isn't a key, do you have any other ideas? Maybe there's some way to break the chains? Or if that doesn't work, I guess we can always cut me out of them. Oh yes, the saw technique. She offers the suggestion with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out if it meant we could finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Explore, he let me out of here. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. Pretty sure you heard them. I'll repeat myself once again. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Try the door. You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. Return to the bottom of the stairs. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates God, before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. Moy. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you. The clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. You can't keep cheating like that, you know. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. Save the princess. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. <laughs> it's just like, such a contrast. Like the little spot of the blood on it. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Approach the locked door. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches yeah, the bottom Quiet. stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Slay the prince. No, 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 no. Warn her. Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? Y you know you don't have to do this, right? Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! Yeah, 100%. I think the Derrider is just in every one of your aspects. Resist. The blade! Move. The. Blade. As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. Claws. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Why'd you miss the heart? Stay strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Whatever. 
she sinks the blade into your chest again and again My spleen. and again, and you feel every inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm oh. sorry! She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Just finish me off! Apparently not, though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. You have one job! <laughs> I'm so sorry! She says that she stabs my arm instead. With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. Moi. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter Double, The Damsel You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Deja vu, I know I've been here before. Okay, no. Oh, don't you start grandstanding about morals. The fate of the world is at risk right now, and the life of a mere princess shouldn't stop you from saving us all. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yes, he didn't approve of us last time, did he? If we're going to save our beloved, we'll have to be sneaky about it. Our beloved? Yes, you'll have to be very sneaky about your intentions if you're going to try and save the princess. Ah, so all of the cards are on the table. Then you should know that we and the princess are in love, and the four of us will be foiling any and all assassination attempts you've got in the works. We'll see about that. Whatever you do, just be sure to ignore him specifically. It sounds like he's the sort who'd sacrifice the whole world for a peck on the cheek. Yeah, that sounds about right. What can I say? A world without love is a world that isn't worth saving. You're quite right there, voice of the smitten. This is Simitel and Truth, and all that's really happened, why should I listen to you? Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or, or at least a version of me. Then I guess more like the fifth or sixth. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. You were the one who did us in, villain. Well, not you in the literal sense, but you did everything you could to stop us from rescuing her. Oh, I wonder why. Maybe it's because the entire world was at stake. No lone princess is worth that price. I beg to differ. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to take a deep breath and assume that whoever is making the decisions here has the common sense to ignore your protestations. Anyway, I believe your second question was, What's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. You forced the princess to kill us, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. On top of that, we get the voice of the simp in our head. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything just like I told you she would? No, in my ideal world, I think the princess ended the IRS. She would never. She's a perfect angel that you cruelly imprisoned as part of some convoluted, dastardly scheme. Convoluted? I don't know how this premise could be any more simple. Princess bad, stop her, save everyone. I'm with them, I'm going to find a way to save her from that cabin. 
Let us go and save the princess. That's right, you can't stop all of us. We're going to sweep her off her feet if it's the last thing anyone does. Are these really the sorts of people you'd like to align yourself with? <sighs> You're not at the cabin yet. You still have plenty of time to reflect on the situation. I just hope for all our sakes that you make the right call. Proceed to the care manor. A warning before you go any further. I don't listen to dastardly villains, fine sir. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We already told you we're not playing along with your little game. It's your lies that can't be trusted. Her beauty is the only thing in the world we can believe in. I think we've already been over this. I'm pretty sure he just likes the sound of his own voice. I do. But I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. Proceed into the cabin. The interior of the cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. I mean, you are right, this is one of the few examples of this place that looks like, she looks like, a, like a medieval castle or something. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Even the music sounds nicer. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. I'm sure the princess would tell us there was a mirror if she were up here. In which case she'd be lying to you because, again, there isn't a mirror. Why would you lie about that and what's the point? Although no, the handsome one. That's a great idea. We have to make sure we're looking our best before we save her. We shouldn't waste time preening. But if he is lying about the mirror, it might be important. In this case, the pruning is literal. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would it even do? Because when you, um... I know even some like the loading screens and like menus, like you actually see some feathers and stuff. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. I can literally still see a mirror. But it was there a second ago. And now it's gone. Pity. We could have a feather out of place and now we'll never know. We can't gallantly sweep her off her feet if we have a feather out of place. Yeah, see? Oh no, it's not, uh, yeah, come here, it's a flag. Enter the basement without the blade. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight, but it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. You know how expensive this stone basement probably cost? You saying it's a favor? A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I can hear wedding bells already. I've held my tongue till now, but you're taking this a little too far. We barely even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this over-the-top fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. That's not what the Steam page said. Steam page said we were in love. We walk down the stairs Ooh, and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. 
my love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Of course I would come back, my darling. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. No, she said I was dashing. And she called us a hero. No, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Louis the hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Waiting for you to come back. I didn't want to believe your ravings back in the woods, but this is next to incontrovertible evidence. You've been here before. That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her, it was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but what's done is done. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. Now, hold on, if she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end, and now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. He's got a point. Never saw the world end. Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you, just do your job. You can last time I hurt a lot, why did you do that? I didn't bring a knife, do I have to cut you out again? I bet I died. <laughs> I'm sorry about what happened last time, the narrator who sent me here to kill you took over my body. It was extremely unfair. If another version of me was pushed to such drastic action, it was for good reason. That's okay. You were just doing your best, and that's all that matters. Oh my god. She took that in stride. To a surprising extent. An almost unsettling extent, actually. That's because she's perfect. Do you think she has someone like him telling her what to do? Hmm. Actually. She doesn't. There's no one else like me. Now that you mention that. I think he's right, because I like it better if she doesn't have some horrid little voice like him, always trying to drive her to violence. You killed me last time I heard a lot. Why did you do that? I'm sorry. Didn't you want me to? <laughs> did we? We warned her of the cruel forces seizing our body. That's practically telling her to kill us. She is our beloved, and she made the choice to free us of our misery, to show us mercy and make the best decision for everyone. She made the best decision for her. Don't be so quick to assign kindness. You're just opening yourself up to manipulation. I didn't bring a knife. Do I have to cut you out again? I'm okay with whatever you come up with. You can cut my arm off again. Wow, what a relationship. We won't be laying a finger on her perfect wrists, and indeed, we won't even have to. Do you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her right out with no harm done. What? No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. Why are you two arguing over the logistics of slipping her hand out of her shackles? She just said she'd be okay with any idea we came up with. Am I the only one here who thinks that's weird? She didn't care last time. Why should she care this time? That's our stoic, smiling angel. Hmm. You no, know, you're right. It's extremely bizarre behavior and further evidence that she's a monster who's not to be trusted. So go ahead and slay her. Yeah, just, you know, just slay her. What happened after I died? You died, and now we're talking. Oh, sweet, that's normal. Before we start talking, did the world end? Did you end the world? I don't know. Was I supposed to have ended the world? Would that have made you happy? Isn't that just like our darling princess? She wants to make us happy. My heart melts further with every word that passes through her beautiful lips. Are you listening to her? That's a confession. No, I don't want the world to end. I have no feelings one way or the other about the world ending. 
Honestly, the world sucks. People are plague, and I hope you brought a slow and painful route to the this one. I can't believe that the fate of the entire world has been left in the hands of a misanthrope. Lucky for you, I did destroy the world. I destroyed all of it and made it awful for everyone. Hey, that's a keeper right there. You all, you all have to agree with me. That's a keeper. Get yourself a girl that's going to destroy the world for you. I'd point out that she just admitted to obliterating the entire world, but I guess that wouldn't actually move you. It would move me to put a ring on it. Oh, it moves me. Whatever we do next, we should do our best to not let her out. But have you seen her angelic face? She should get a pass. She just wanted to make us happy. By destroying the world? Ye. Yeah. Apparently, yes. Rescue the princess. No. I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll... You'll what? Take over our body and force us to try and kill her? You have no power over us here. I would if you had a weapon. Not on my watch, villain. My passions contain titanic depths, and if you try anything that might harm our dearest, I will end our life without a second thought. You wouldn't. I would. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings. And doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? Anime. We approach the princess and gingerly slide her hand from her bindings. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. Wait a minute, why were you waiting here in the first place? I can't believe it. But I guess I have to. I told you. There's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Moi. The princess jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh. Quiet, narrator. We need this. If only you had a weapon, one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade would be buried in her back and everyone out there would be saved. Luckily for Mr. Romance, we don't have a weapon. Who needs a weapon when we have the power of love on our side? What do we do now? Um... Wedding? What do you want to do? Let me guess. End the world? Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. I... don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. You wanna go and, uh... Get some milkshakes. She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had her all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? You're so gullible. Is the only thing you've ever doubted the actual truth? Yeah. I think I want to leave. And I think... The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection. Oh god, she's got one of those, like... Winky winks. And then, she shrugs. I don't know. What do you want to do? I want you to tell me what you want. I want you to tell me what you want. I just want to make you happy. Wait, something happened. She can't just want to make us happy. It makes sense to me. That's all I want for her, so of course she'd want the same for us. Let's uh, come back here. I'm gonna. I mean, I made a save. We can just leave right now. This isn't right. Let's just get out of here. That sounds perfect. Yeah, she went back to normal. The princess takes your hand, the last hopes of the entire world slipping through your fingers as they intertwine with hers. We have each other. We don't need the world for our happy ending. I'm sorry, but did anyone else notice? I think Arwise, she has a bigger bust than the other ones. I like to think that you do, actually. Look, I have my doubts, but the choice has been made and this is happening. You don't have to mope about it. I will mope about it, because moping is the only recourse you love-blind fools have left me with. Be quiet, narrator. Look, she has stars. You and the princess walk up the stairs hand in hand. Ugh, look at the way she's smiling at you. She doesn't have to be so happy about this. And we're already at the hand-holding stage, it's pretty lewd. And what happens after we walk up the stairs? Let's see. Oh, isn't that interesting? The door slams in your face and the lock clicks. Your locks could not stand in front of the power of love. That's a familiar move. Did I do that last time? The 
then you should know that you won't be able to leave. Oh no! Did someone lock us in here? That's not fair! We're supposed to leave now. She's right. It isn't fair. But the unfairnesses of the world are no match for the strength of true love. Enough with this true love nonsense. You just met her! Of course you wouldn't understand. Our passions run deeper than anything you have ever known. Are you listening to this? You don't have to go along with the every whim of that delusional voice. I'm just along for the ride at this point. Explore, do you think you can open it? I think we can open it if we try together. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Like a pair of teenagers in love, you and the princess place your hands on the door together. Blech. And the lock clicks and the door creaks open. Are you kidding me? I told you you can't be in love. It's the strongest power. I told you our love was insurmountable. You and the princess make your way upstairs and... The blade, that's right. There's still a chance for you to do the right thing. Take the blade from the table and slay her before it's too late. Nah. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Um, I'll try that later. I'm just morbidly curious. You're not doing that. You're enjoying this, aren't you? You're taking every opportunity you can to draw out the end of the world and make me suffer. I hate you. Let me just be more of my waifu. That's the way out. We're going to leave together, just like you wanted. Yes, I suppose you are going to do that, aren't you? You cross the room, opening the door to the cabin. And then you step outside. Cap romantic haze, your love will set you free. Our happy ending at last. We did it. What should we do now? Um, get milkshakes. Where did everything go? Where did he go? Oh, is he gone? I hadn't noticed. I was too busy staring deep into our beloved's eyes. I'm cold. Is being happy supposed to be so cold? Sometimes. She's cold. Quick, our feathers. Pluck them all and weave her a coat worthy of a princess. But you don't get the chance to make that jacket. Nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a mirror? Why is it here? Why now? It's gonna be okay, just trust me, we've been here before and you always get scared. It feels so bad. Like, looking into it right now is gonna be the end of everything. Yes. I fear that we won't like what we'll see. What if we just sit here and preen for a while? That can't hurt, right? Now it's in the other side, it's going to be okay. It's not the end. Whatever's on the other side is going to be nice. Okay. If you say so, we'll trust you. She'll be there waiting for us. I just know it. Approach the mirror. You approach the mirror. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go in there. I'm just going to see what unique dialogue she has for this specific form. And then I'm going to back out into the basement. And then do, um, you know, she was like transforming a little bit. And then if that leads to another route, or at least another form, and that one gets grabbed, I'll lock that one into my main save. Because I think I have to be careful, because I think the game's going to throw me into an end game if I get too many of these vessels. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. We need to see what's in it. Oh god. We're dying. The everyone was bloat. Now it's we're slowly rotting. You've withered. Bring yourself in the long quiet once again. Proceed to the cabin. You're at the cabin. Approach her. I am a growing chorus of contradiction. A mass of tides ebbing and flowing all at once in more directions than my attention can bear to hold. To look at any one is to shift them all into something new, and to look away is to reshape them yet again. All of me is changing, and yet the rest of me is still the same. 
You can't be a contradiction. Contradictions don't exist. And yet my waters flow and my streets bustle. There are no words that can describe me into non-existence. There is no logic that can bind my multitudes. I am everything that you have known me to be. But I am also none of it. How can you stand to be a contradiction? As easily as you can stand to be you. You are like me. Even if you have chosen not to look at the corners of you that do not fit. Even if you have chosen to ignore the brilliant contours of your soul. It doesn't matter how many times I go back, at least one of us has always hurt. Hurts the other. Doesn't that change you? Doesn't make you worse. It changes me. But it doesn't make me worse. Nor does it make me care for you any less. Does it make you worse? Do you resent me? If anything, it makes me like you more. I don't know what that says about me. It says that your heart is gentle. That even in the darkness, you are guided by compassion. What do you think of this vessel? This one is soft and delicate. You molded her to love you, and she'll make for a gentle heart. Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. I'm still planning to kill you once we're done with this. If that remains your choice when all is said and done, then you may try. But know that I do not wish you harm, even if you attempt to destroy me. Do you know what happens to the worlds we leave behind? My perspectives are shadowed. You have seen what I have seen, just as I have seen what you have seen. The angles of my vantage do not offer me hidden truths, and my attention is turned inward, except when you are here with me. Perhaps this will change when our work is done. If you figure out what you will want when we're finished. The desires of my multitude thrive in endless competition with themselves. But none of them rise above their dance to influence me. I yearn for what I have always yearned for. Our awakening. Other desires shrink in the light of knowing you and knowing me. Do you still not care what I bring you next? I care about your gifts, but I have no preferences to burden you with. Even if I did, I would never dare to tarnish our relationship by assuming myself above you. So you don't have any preferences on how you'd like to change or grow? The tides do not dictate where they are pulled. A river does not dictate its outlets. My gift to you is to let you choose your path. And my task is to treasure the gifts you bring me. How many more vessels do I need to bring you? We will know when we near our destination. I'm ready to go back. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again. Everything goes dark and you die. A loving vessel. I just want to make you happy. She can't. It makes... Okay, so we're back here. Let's explore this sand a little bit. There must be something you want, but what would make you happy? You don't thing. You just met me. You can't base your entire happiness around me. I want you to make me unhappy. But what would make you happy? I just want to make you happy. Oh, great. Anime. Is she broken? What's going on? What's going on is she's lying to you. Only she isn't a good liar. Are you starting to trust me now? I want you to make me unhappy. Okay, if that's what makes you happy, I can make you unhappy. Now, this is peak Moy. Peak anime right here. This isn't right. I don't Down know what's going on, but this isn't right. I fail to see the problem here. She's just sweet on us. You don't have to act like it's a big deal. Do you want to end the world? Are you seriously asking her that? Oh, we've been over this one. I do want to end the world. Good for you. But you don't think, you just met me. You can't base your entire happiness around me. Okay, if that's what makes you happy. Yeah, this is soul right here, peak soul. Is it just me or 
does it feel like we're alone right now? Like we're the only ones here? Hands. You're going to be absorbing a very unique soul, my friend. You'll get a chance to ask another question. Nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. No! She was our perfect match. Yeah, all, uh... All school... School, uh... Break sketchy of her. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a... Mirror? Why is it here? Why now? Alright, skip ahead. And when I get here, are you literally gonna have like a sketch in your hands? <laughs> I am a growing chorus of contradiction. A mass of tides. Okay, we, we've seen this dialogue. It's gonna be basically the same. I'd want to see her unique vessel thing. What do you think of this vessel? This one is soft and delicate. You molded her to love you, and she'll make for a gentle heart. Yeah, so it's just a, it's kind of like the other one we did, where it's just a more advanced form, but it's essentially the same vessel. All right, that was You're an idealized vessel in the woods, and at the end of the constructed damsel is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock this saving. This is what my main route is gonna be locked into. Um, and then I'm gonna go back. And I'm gonna stab her. <laughs> in the damsel route. Slay the princess. You take the blade from the table, turning its tip towards the unsuspecting princess. Thank you. Wait. No. You barbarian, what are you doing? But you ignore the pleas of the foolish little voice and strike. The princess's eyes grow wide with terror as the blade falls, but she does absolutely nothing to stop you. Your blade pierces her heart, and she collapses pathetically to the ground. That doesn't look pathetic to me. It looks like she's kind of happy. I'm sorry. Did I do something wrong? No, my love. You did nothing wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not you. I'm going to die now. I think that's what you want. And just like that, she's dead. And the world is saved. Thank you for seeing this through. I know it must have been difficult. She's got lady killer. Oh, I feel sick. Sick? You took part in the murder of the fairest creature that's ever lived. And you merely feel sick. I, for one, am absolutely distraught. Grief-stricken. Inconsolable. You'll get over it. You just saved everyone. Get over it? You smarmy ass. There's nothing in the world worth getting over it for. We might as well just end it all. You raise the blade, uh -oh. aiming the point directly towards your heart. Excuse me? No, you absolutely do not do that. Yeah, let's not make any rash decisions. We should give ourselves a minute, take a deep breath, and rash. The only rash decision we've made was running our cursed blade through her heart. This is far from rash. This is measured. This is the only thing left for us to do now that she's gone. You know, the voice of the spinning actually starts to sound cool when he's sad. I'm the one who makes the decisions here, and I say no. Exactly. You're not doing this. All of you may have previously thought that my passions were too great to stifle, but those were merely passions of joy. My passions of sorrow run deeper than the ocean itself, and you'll find that they are far more unstifleable. Haven't you? Haven't you all? You're, you're kind of having at at us. Don't believe this. What? What don't you believe? You plunge the blade Lord. into your own heart and collapse to the floor. You can't be serious. Why are you helping him? I'm not. He just made it happen. I'm sorry. That's right. You're all sorry. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 3. The Grey. Ooh, aliens. You're on a path. In the wood. You horrid monster. Do you think just because we've returned to the woods you've earned my forgiveness? Our beloved had best be alive and well when we return to the cabin, or you'll never know the end of my wrath. She won't be alive and well when we return to that cabin, because she's dead. We killed her, 
So now this combination, we have the smitten and the cold. You killed her. And so I killed you. And you clearly didn't do a good enough job. I'm still here. Dan has got as hell. Oh, and I'm still here too. If you lot get to be blessed with seemingly eternal life, that must mean she's still there, waiting for us to throw ourselves at her feet in remorse. I doubt it. I think I'm better at killing than you are. So you've been here before. Of course you've been here before. What count is it this time? Two? It's our third. What gave it away? Your open discussions. I couldn't care less what he knows. Every second we stand around arguing in the woods is a second that I'm anxiously worrying about her. Take us to the cabin and take us there now. With each passing moment, our relationship may be damaged even further. Though I fear the rift between us may already be permanent. And if it is permanent, then what? You'll kill us again. Anything to be with my beloved. Oh, you just wait and see. My vengeance will echo the depths of my bereavement. Don't provoke him. I prefer if we didn't die again. I'm not fond of dying. Why not? You've already done it twice. It was unpleasant. It was only unpleasant because you think it's supposed to be unpleasant. I'll make you feel what I feel if it's the last thing I do. And mark my words, you won't like it when it happens. Oh. How exciting. I'd love to see you try. Can I? Well, I'm not just going to try. I'm going to actually do it. Um, voice of the hero, you want to step in here? I'm looking forward to it. Good. I am too. Can I talk now? Yes, I can. Great. Now that you're listening, let me remind you that if you're here in the woods... What? It means that the princess is not here dead, and that her very existence currently poses a direct threat to the entire world. I'll believe that when I see her living body. Did I hear that right? He says she's alive. Our beloved lives again. Yes, she's alive. But you're going to have to make her not alive. You'll have to slay her. It's your job. We absolutely will not. This is a tale of love and redemption, and this time it will not end in bloodshed. Except ours, if any of you try anything. Let's do our best to keep him away from anything sharp. If we're lucky, there won't even be a blade when we get to the cabin. There'll probably be two blades when we get to the cabin now. We haven't talked enough about how different this place is. It wasn't different last time. If this isn't the same path in the woods you're used to, that means that her influence is already spreading and you're running out of time. Wait. But if her influence is spreading, that means there's hope. That means our beloved is waiting up there for us. Ready to make amends. Yes, I already told you that she's alive. Don't mind him. I don't think he's doing too well. I'm doing better than any of you. I'm doing great. She's alive. Influence doesn't require life. But if things restarted, why wouldn't she be alive? Hmm. What do you define as alive? Who said they restarted? All they've done is changed. I shan't listen to the vile mutterings of you serpents. Onward! Our living, breathing princess awaits us. What happens if we don't go to the cabin? She'll find a way out eventually and the world will still end. The only way this resolves is if you find her and slay her before that happens. Again he makes her out to be a monster. I'm tired of all this slander. She's never hurt anyone in her life except for us. And that was our fault. We don't know that. She could have done all sorts of things we weren't around to see. Turn around and leave. Go to the cabin. I'm fine with either. So long as we don't just do the same thing again. That would be boring. I'm the one in charge here, and if we slay her again, we're not going to make us kill ourselves. Is that clear? Oh, it's clear, you murderer. Though I should remind you that you're not as in charge as you seem to think you are. I'm sure his outburst last time was just a fluke. I wouldn't worry about him. Besides, if he kills us again, he kills us again. It doesn't matter. He'll tire out eventually. The flame of passion always burns out in the end. 
Spoken like a true cynic. No, that's the voice of the cold, not the voice of the cynic. Enough, Bix, stay focused and get to the cabin. Whatever happens next, it seems like all our answers are in the cabin. Might as well see this through. I'm sure you've already heard my words of warning in one of your past lives. You've already managed to slay her once, just... Don't muck it up this time, alright? No. Oh, we'll muck it up alright. We'll get our happy ending. Even if it damns each and every person who's ever lived. I like that mine of steel route. Dedicated. Uh, whatever you do, don't let him influence a single decision. He's clearly lost it. No, no, no. no, no. Smithen may have a point. Let him work. I hate that I'm agreeing with him on anything, but I really don't like being at the whims of someone so... unstable. It's stressful. Yes. Having all those feelings isn't very productive, is it? But we're just passengers here. Why stress over something you can't control? You're saying that like stress is just something you can turn off. Oh, it is. It is. Beep boop. It's easy. Whatever happens, happens. Are you even alive? What's the point of doing anything if you're not going to feel a single emotion? I don't know. I just exist. And that's fine with me. This is horribly unproductive. The cabin and your extremely important destiny await. Proceed into the cabin. The interior of the cabin oh. feels dry and brittle. Ancient dust-covered wooden beams hold up a crumbling ceiling like mummified ribs, each elegantly carved detail of the stately building preserved in an extended stasis. Everything here has been kept safe and dry and lifeless. But you're not alone. You can feel something watching you. There is a figure faintly outlined against the dusty wood of the far wall. That's why there's no trees, because everything's lifeless. Is that... her? Our beloved. So she does live. Uh... She doesn't look very alive to me. Before you can make a move, the figure is gone, vanishing behind the door on the far side of the room. The door at the end of the room, but there isn't a door. It's just that damn mirror again. Ah, yes, the mirror. So we can see the monster we've become. If it even lets us look before it vanishes to the mirror. Is this some kind of joke? Did you all plan this out before dying? There is no mirror. There's the door to the basement, the table, and the pristine blade. Maybe it's gone because we've already killed her with it. Perhaps it's gone because an oh-so-deserved guilt has started to worm its way into each and every one of you. Perhaps all of you do feel just as bad as I about what we've done. Though if you felt the oppressive guilt, I feel we would have manifested that weapon directly into our heart. Okay, the spin is trying to talk too much now. I suppose it doesn't matter why the blade is gone, but you're going to have to find it if you're going to do this right. So why don't you march over to that door and make your way down to the basement? Explore, but there is no door. As if something as flimsy as a missing door would stop us on our sacred quest. Cross the room. Find our way back to her. Make things right. You're clearly hallucinating, but I'd rather not get into it with you right now. The door to the basement is on the far side of the room, whether you can see it or not. Approach the mirror. You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You must think you're looking at that mirror you mentioned earlier, the one that doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open the door. It's still so hazy. We should try and clean it off. Yes. Trying to touch it does seem to be the magic spell to get it out of our way. Wipe the mirror clean. It's time for all of you to see what we've become. You reach forward and place your hand door. on the door to the basement. The handle is just a little to your right, and a little down. So much for our reflection. We didn't need to see ourselves anyway. I'm much more interested in seeing other things. I see. We are too hideous for even a mirror to behold. We can only hope she might still see some good in us. 
<laughs> no way left to go but down. We're so we're so hitting it so the beer just ran. Like I'm out of here. I'm checking out this Sebastian <laughs> under that logic. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an antique staircase lit by weak torchlight. The air here is so stale it practically stands still, as if the very molecules of this place have been fossilized, trapped for eons until your arrival. Even the blaze of the torches can't penetrate the odorless air, as if they'd run out of fuel to burn ages ago, their light still flickering more out of habit than from adhering to a physical reality. A wispy figure watches you from the bottom of the stairs, face veiled in shadow. There she is again, my love. She's just an old memory. Your eyes lock for a brief moment, then she vanishes around the corner. Come back, my love. I'm still okay with a ghost. It's the thought that counts. I'm sorry about last time, are we good? You receive no response. Do you think she's upset with us? I don't like being here unarmed after what happened last time. I feel so exposed. Of course she's livid, and with good reason. You aren't helping. Are you scared of a little ghost? What's she going to do? Look at us until we feel bad? She can look all she wants. It won't do anything. She might be able to give us a heart attack, I guess. Proceed on the stairs. As you descend the final oh, step, she's dead. the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor, her wrist still bound to the wall by a heavy chain. Hey, wait a minute, I killed you upstairs. This cell is a dark and isolated place, with not so much as a window to allow starlight to penetrate the gloom. See? She's dead. No. What foul trickery is this? How can this be? We just saw her alive and well a moment ago, floating away transparently. Whatever we saw was a ghost. I thought we were all on the same page. Do try to keep up. Your thoughts are interrupted by the sound of a slamming door and a clicking lock. You turn to see the shade of the princess oh, that was staring fire. down at you from the top of the stairs, clutching a brightly burning torch. Um, I have feathers. She is dead. Have you never heard of a ghost before? Oh, dang it. Oh, for the love of... Can we not waste time arguing over the semantics of what is and isn't dead? She is clearly conscious. She clearly just slammed the door on you, and she clearly has a weapon. Your pristine blade sticking out of her chest. This is extremely bad. Catastrophic, even. But she's a ghost. Yet, yeah, dead or not, what are we supposed to do about her? Slaying or destroying, if we want to be a little more death neutral, seems off the table. Destroy the princess. We make amends. She obviously still holds us in her heart. She's bearing a torch for us and everything. No, seriously, she's gonna light us on fire. Those feathers are flammable. But she hasn't said anything. Are you sure she can talk like this? You came back. I missed you. That angelic voice. I missed you too, my beloved. You sure snapped back to your old self quick. Yes. Seeing her dazzling countenance again has reignited the warmth in my heart. I have found it in me to forgive the sins this body has committed. We can have our perfect romance after all. This is a bad place. We're, We're supposed to be together. But it keeps making us hurt each other. I'm glad you finally noticed. The torch falls from the princess's hand and bounces down the stairs. Well, I guess actually the Sabina was right. She just holds a torch for us. It'll be so, so much, much better when it's, when it's gone. gone. The skeletal wood of the basement, perfectly dry after uncountable years of desiccation, immediately catches fire. Never mind, I'm right. She's gonna burn us alive. She's trying to kill us. A misplaced escalation of her passions, but clearly she still cares for us. I say we burn with her. I guess you have a burning love for her. Why did you close the door? Because I wanted to be with you. 
I don't want you to leave. See? Everything's fine. She wants to be with us. Yeah, in a bad way. She just has a unique way of expressing things. With fire. The fire grows quickly, devouring the basement, dancing up the walls and painting every surface with strokes of flame. You're choked by smoke, and the air around you grows uncomfortably warm. We've never burned to death before. I wonder how it's going to feel. Bad! I bet it'll feel really, really bad! Yes, it will be terrible, so you'd better come up with something to do, and fast. Your personal safety is far from the only thing she's threatening right now. I'm pretty sure we're just gonna burn up. I mean, she's a ghost. I think a bit of fiery passion is good for the world. You're just trying to spoil her fun. Yeah, so you just look on the bright side of life, like the Sminnen. And by bright, I mean the brightness of that fire. I'm not spoiling anything. I'm trying to prevent oblivion. Lenial, you're trying to kill me. I'm going to burn. It's okay. I'm going to burn too. And then we won't hurt anymore. Big words for a ghost! She's right about the last part. Burning doesn't hurt forever. The heat grows in intensity as the flames draw ever nearer. You can practically feel your skin sizzling already. If you're going to try and stop her from killing you and destroying the whole world, you'd better do something, and you'd better do it now. I wonder if we look good right now. Fire makes a lot of things look good. I can only imagine how dazzling our eyes are in the dancing flames. Do you think she's noticed? I don't want to burn to death. We don't have to, right? Rush for the blade, rush for the door. Rush for the blade? As you rush up the stairs towards the princess, the entire cabin erupts into a raging inferno. I'm pretty sure we're doomed. You push through the flames, trying to ignore the choking hot air filling your lungs. You manage to reach her, your hand wrapping around the hilt of the blade. Okay, how's that blade just sitting there? But the metal is already blistering hot. Your hand sizzles as it melts on contact so much as pull away, your nerves seizing up as they're fried, the bones of your hand fusing in place around the weapon. The uh. princess, smiling warmly as her skin bubbles away, places her hand on yours and clutches it to her chest. The pain is unbearable at first. Every inch of you screams as your flesh is stripped away, your muscles stiffening as they're cooked, your blood boiling in your veins. But it isn't long before the flames take your nerves, and with them, your ability to feel much of anything. This is kind of, uh, something. See? That wasn't so bad. That was horrible. It was so bad. You'll get used to it. There are still the feelings of the heart. Those never go away. Oh, they always do in the end. You just haven't experienced enough. Eventually you'll want them to stop too. You'll make them stop. Trust me. The princess's smile never fades. Her skin peels away, and then her muscle until all you can see is her charring skull, locked in an eternal grin. It's very romantic, really. We got our happy ending after all. We can die happy. So this achievement implies that we died at a, the hands of a burning spirit. Huh. Oh, it's like a marriage. In a very twisted way. Despite your best efforts, you do not die. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. And there's that. Skip ahead. Why? But it feels so bad. Okay. Okay. We're just gonna go straight to the uh, one dialogue. Oh, 
abyss of contradiction. Which would be, what do you think of this vessel? This one is passion betrayed. But even in the end, her love never faded. She will make for a bright heart. Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again. You're on a path. That's the, the burning woods. vessel we just did. And at the end of that path, bring the burn gray to her. And in the basement of that cat. I'm just a little curious. Let's uh, let's if we just linger. Let me out. You're trying to kill Dying me. Apart kept us apart. Dying together will keep us together. The flames lick at your form, stripping layers of you away, causing your skin to blister and pop and crisp as you burn. The princess glides to your side, her ghostly form blackening as she, too, succumbs. This is terrible! We're going to die! I'd savor this feeling if I were you. Soon enough, we won't have nerves. So the main difference is our hands are being held together rather than on the knife. And we'll get to die with her. After what you made us do last time, this is as sweet an end as we could hope for. She clutches you close to her chest, her eyes bright and her smile wide with manic affection, watching as the flames take you away. And that's the, the pain same. Is All right, so that's it for that episode of Slay the Princess. That is essentially the entirety of the Stranger and Damsel route. Now, once again, when we come back to the next part, the main save I'm going off on is when we got the soulful... <laughs> version of the damsel so it's the um the cracked version of the nightmare the stranger and then the very primitive sketch version of the damsel that's that's the vessels we've banked right now once again i don't know how many vessels we can bank before it maybe initiates us in some kind of end game so if it gets to that point you'll just see some like basically very specific styles of editing where i'll just reload and skip and reload and skip and so on to get the other routes to show you the rest of the game so either way, you'll catch all the main content anyway. But yeah, so that's it for that episode. Stay tuned for the next one.